In a building filled with many shelves, this shelf here is one of my favourite. And that's because it all relates to one of the giants of science, Robert Boyle. He's a big name. He is a big name, yes. And slightly overshadowed these days by Isaac Newton, of course. But in the very early days of the Royal Society, he was the most famous scientist around associated with the organisation. So he was kind of like Isaac Newton before there was Isaac Newton. Yeah, that, that's right. And the air pump, which is one of his most famous pieces of equipment, was a bit of an icon in the early Royal Society. So he had not just his name, but a good symbol as well. And anyone who did science, probably to high school level, will also have heard of Boyle's Law. And this shelf is really special because these aren't just Boyle's grand papers and his inventions. These are his personal notebooks. These are sort of yeah. a very intimate part of him in a way, aren't they? And they're really interesting to look at. That's right. So he would just do day-to-day -day notes in these things. He would do drafts of articles or papers or books that he was working on. So it is very much the, the kind of working practices of Robert Boyle, which is, is rather good, I think. One almost doesn't know where to start and what to look at. It's a bit of a lucky mm. dip, so we'll just take... Just take, just take one and, take and see one what you shelf. find. I don't want to rip the paper, so I'll take my glove off. There's sort of all sorts of lists, almost like I half expect to find a shopping list here for milk and bread and sometimes casual, sometimes formal. Yeah, well, look at this one here. So we got a, a little note here. It says an odd stone found in a shark at St Helena, weighed in air, gives you a weight there, and in water. So little shark stone there. Well, who hasn't weighed a stone they found in Indeed, a shark? Indeed, yes, exactly right. That's not like the core work for Boyle. This is just an odd thing and he's wanted to get it down into the notebooks, hasn't he? That's right, yeah. And we got something about magnetism. Of the magnetism ascribed to the terrestrial globe. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting list of things that he might think needed research, for instance. Like his, his wish list of yeah, a to-do list. We, we do have that kind of to-do list in the collection from him. Why are these useful? I mean, Robert Boyle was a famous scientist. Anything he did that was important has been published in Filtrans and we know Boyle's Law. I mean... It's not like there's stuff still to be found out. What point is there in keeping these scribbles and these half-baked thoughts and things that may have come to nothing? I think it's exactly that. It tells you how someone thinks, how their thoughts develop, how their writings develop. So it isn't just the finished product, the printed item that you would normally see, but everything from tenuous beginnings of an idea through its working until a final version along with his spills. Look, he spilled something on there, didn't he? A bit of coffee, maybe? Having a latte? Probably more likely something in the lab. Oh, OK, yeah, you're right. It's probably chemicals. There are a few original bindings here. Uh, you can see in these ones, they would have been quite uh, beautifully bound in, in full calf. There's a bit of gilding in there. But you can see with these ones, uh, there's quite a lot of wear on them. They are working documents, and therefore, eventually, bindings need to be either repaired or replaced. I like that there are all sorts of symbols here as well. I mean, are these foreign to you, these symbols? I have no idea what some of these mean. They'll be alchemical symbols. So okay. if you see a kind of circle, the cross, and Mercury's probably one of those. So they're alchemical signs denoting particular substances. And uh, to make raisin wine. So there we go. So, so it's quite nice. Got raisin wine, things about tobacco, eggs. Maybe this is just his... <laughs> maybe Shopping this. Is, I, think, I think this could be a recipe. <laughs> But of course, this is not the only boil material we have by any means. His whole collection is here, and therefore we have all of his letters and all of his uh, longer manuscript works as well, which is a huge collection. I mean, that stuff's important, mm. but this stuff feel I like that this is dirty, and I yeah. feel like I'm get I feel like he could almost be here with us. Oh, look, this it's is the weather. weather. Yeah. So these are meteorological records. The weather in December. Foggy, dark day, moonlight but cloudy, foggy, foggy. Every hour or so he's doing the temperature and the barometer. A really detailed description of the weather. He was a proper nerd, wasn't he? I love it. <laughs> I quite like this one too, Keith, because this is some kind of catalogue of all the, the minerals and chemicals that Boyle had, well, presumably in his private stash. Well, that's right. So um, some of the notebooks contain a record of the books that, that Boyle owned uh, at his death. Uh, and here, uh, Henry Hunt, who is associated with the Royal Society, has catalogued his mineral collection and all kinds of things in there. He had a lot of silver by the looks of it. Look at all the different types of silver ore that he was keeping. What else has he got? Has he got any gold? Here we go. Under G. Gold ore from East India mixed with spar. 
gold ore in a grey and white rock, gold and red earth, lots of iron of course. Lots so of iron ore, lots of ironstone. Okay people, so there you go, here we are, one of my favourite shelves at the Royal Society, basically a, a snapshot of Robert Boyle's brain, and nicely bound to boot. And this is a special clock, isn't it, Keith? What is this? It is. This, uh, you can see, is by John Shelton, his maker's name's on the front, on the face of the clock there. And it has a Royal Society number on it, which means it's part of the 18th century Royal Society collection. And this particular clock uh, went round the world with Captain James Cook. This is Captain Cook's clock. Indeed, yes. HMS Endeavour, he took a, this timepiece with him, and off it went to Australia. 